Galatians 5, we are in a series called Fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is how the Holy Spirit works in our lives once we come to know Jesus. So we are going to be in Galatians 5, and we are live all over the world right now. I'm so glad you're here with us wherever you're at online. And uh, we are coming to you from beautiful, sunny Southern California. And we are in Galatians 5 today. We're going to start in verse 13. For you are called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Underline opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For the whole law, everything that God required in the Old Testament, is fulfilled in one word or in one phrase. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit. Circle walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. Underline desires of your flesh. For the desires of my flesh are against the Holy Spirit. And the desires of the Holy Spirit are against my flesh. For these are opposed to each other. Circle opposed. To keep you from doing what you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, underline led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So you've fulfilled God's desires when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Now the works of the flesh are evident. So how would I know God's not working in my life? So Paul, the apostle, writes in the negative first. This is how you know God's not working in your life. The fruit of my flesh is evident. Sexual immorality. So he starts with sexual immorality. So that's an obvious one. Uh, if you're doing stuff sexually with your body, outside of God's design, which is a man and a woman in marriage for life, any other use of your sexuality outside of that is prohibited and sinful. So stop doing that. Sensu uh, impurity, sensuality, which just means I live for the pleasure of my flesh. Idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, circle jealousy. We're going there today. Fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, circle envy. We're going there too. Drunkenness and orgies and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before. That those who do such things as these will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit, here we go. Everybody look at me. I'm going to preach inside of preaching. Everybody ready? This is free. I want you to understand something. The Holy Spirit's work in your life is not connected to your emotional state. This is going to bend your mind because some of you guys have been at churches where it's like, can you feel the Holy Spirit? Can you feel God? Can you feel the thing? And let me tell you something, ready? That's nowhere in the Bible. There are zero verses that talk about you feeling God, which is odd because many of us grew up in churches where our pastors that told us you need to feel something. Do you feel the thing? Do you feel it? Blah, blah, blah. I want you to understand something. The Holy Spirit is never connected to your ups and downs emotionally. Which means you can be having one of the worst times of your life and God's still doing great things in your heart. You can be at the top of your emotional game and still be and dishonor God with your body. So watch. It's awesome when our emotional state parallels God's work in our life. But I want to be clear. This is going to bend right, now, right away. I haven't even started. This is going to bend some of your minds. The Holy Spirit has zero to do with how you feel emotionally. So then what is my litmus test if I have the Holy Spirit? If it's not my emotional state, if I don't get up, worked up in a frenzy and stamp around and wave a flag. How do I know the Holy Spirit's in my life? I can help you because actually the, the Bible does speak to that. Here's how you know the Holy Spirit's in your life. Here's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. What is it? It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness, circle goodness, we're going there today. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things like those, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified our flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with what the Spirit's doing. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Circle envying. Here we go. Everybody look at me. Don't tap out. Take a Red Bull because we're going to go deep. Everybody ready? Listen, I got one person that's ready. Here we go. Look at me. I'm going to walk into the grossest part of your heart today. 
I'm going to walk into the most disgusting part of who you are. And it might surprise you. I'm going to walk into an area of your life that you might not even realize is poisoning your walk with God and it poisoning everything good in your life. It's so native and natural to you. You're going to be like, I, I didn't even know that was a thing. So we're going to walk into the deep, deep recesses. I'm going to literally dredge up from the bottom of your heart some of the grossest parts of who you are. And then we're going to talk about what God wants after that. Here we go. If you have your notes, pull them out. They should be inside your bulletin if you came on campus. By the way, how are my fireplace people? Let's go, my friends. So if you came on campus, inside the bulletin are my notes. If you're online with us at the top of the comment section on Facebook and on YouTube, you'll see a link way at the top. Click on that link and my notes will come up. I'm going to talk about the negative first. Here we go, because Paul does. The fruit of my flesh, what comes naturally out of who I am without God is jealousy and envy. Don't raise your hands, but where are my jealous people in here? I got one. You didn't even listen. So listen to what I'm saying. Ready? That's literally everybody. Everybody is jealous and envious at some point in their life to some people in their life. I'm going to, our culture, literally social media is built on jealousy and envy. We have filters that make sure we look pretty decent when we get on there. Skinify. Why do we do that? Because we want people to go, dude, she looks great. Wow. Dude, he bought that thing? Dude, that's a sweet car. Dude, he bought four motorcycles? Oh my gosh. That guy, has a, that guy bought a, a pad in Hemet? That's a beautiful space. Man, praise God. Dude, why don't I have something like that? Ready? Here we go. I'm going to walk into one of the most disgusting parts of humanity, and you and I are in it. And you know what it is? It's the idea of this. I'm jealous of somebody else's good that God is doing in their life. It doesn't affect me. It has nothing to do with me, but I don't like that God is blessing somebody other than me. Here we go. Before sin, God made humans to do good and be happy to see other people blessed by God's goodness. So watch this. Everybody pay attention. It always hasn't been like this. Before sin, who, who has experienced life before sin? None of us have. Only Adam and Eve, our first two parents, mom and dad, our first two original mom and dad, they were made by God before sin without envy or jealousy of anybody else. Watch. Sin happens though. Now all of us are post-sin. All of us now are saturated in sin, which means we're self-focused. We only care about ourselves rather than caring about other people. One of the natural outworkings of that is I am jealous and envious of other people. But sin brought jealousy and envy into the human condition. Everybody look in your, everybody look in your Bible. Um, in Galatians 5, verse uh, 20, I told you to circle jealousy. And then at the uh, beginning of verse 21, envy. Jealousy and envy are, are similar, but I put it in your notes. Look at it. The Greek word for, for jealousy that's translated jealousy in English is the word zealous, which, which means a burning feeling against someone. So we have many burning feelings in our life. Uh, sexual like desire, like that burn you feel to like sleep with somebody. Um, the burn to like make money, man. I want to, I want to, I want to make money or I want to be popular. Or I just, you, you feel that like inner push from inside. And some of that is okay. Some of that is good. We, we are driven humans and some of that is, is appropriate and okay. However, this weird burning inside is a burning that actually is against somebody. It's a, it's a dissatisfaction that you, you don't want them to be blessed by God. So it's jealousy for what they have just because you don't have that thing. Or they're living the kind of life in some way that you wish was a part of the way you lived your life. And it's bizarre because humans don't, or uh, animals don't deal with that. My dog never walks up to another dog at dog bark and goes, that's a sweet collar. Dude, wow. Wow. I got this piece of garbage that my owner gave me. But dude, that's like, that has like rhinestone encrusted like, but that's sweet. I wish I was like going home with you because man, I like the living your life, man. Let's like la vida loca, bro. 
I'm sure the food you get is like hand, you know, crafted. I get some garbage from Costco. Dogs never, they never go, whoa, I'm jealous, bro. Animals, don't worry about it. Insects, don't worry about it. Fish, don't ever get jealous or have envy. But humans do, and that's odd. Because it literally, somebody else's blessing has zero to do with your life. Doesn't affect you at all. But for some reason we go, I am really unsatisfied with myself, and I don't like that they're getting something I, I want. Why would that even be a thing? How much of it affects your life literally today? Zero of it. So why do you care that somebody else is getting something awesome? It's, it, it, it opens your heart to realize, wow, I have a poisonous, sinful side of me that I've never actually even dealt with. So the Greek word zealous means, man, I'm, I'm burning against somebody. And then the Greek word envy, I have it in your notes here. <laughs> Look at this. It means bitter-minded. Glad at someone else's loss. Wow. So watch, there's jealousy. Man, I, w- I want what you've got. And then there's envy. I hope God takes that away. Because, you know, as you go through like social media, you're like, dude, wow. They went on another vacation this month. Oh, dude. I don't even want to see that anymore. You know, delete picture. You know, I don't unfollow why do you care? You're a single lady. You see, a, you know, one of your friends or whatever found a nice guy at the orchard. You know, and you as a young lady, like, dude, I just want to be married. I just want to have a stud as a husband. Like, Jesus, where's mine? And like, you want to go, congratulations, I guess. You know, hopefully it rains on your wedding. Why do you care? Why do you care about the blessing of someone else? But you as a young woman, you're like, you know, I just, if they, if they're not, you know, if I can't be happy in marriage, I hope they're not happy in marriage. I'm going to keep showing up to the orchard and keep looking around. All the single studs at the orchard. It's like Jesus's dating pool. Because maybe I'll find one too. But you know what? Until I find one, I'm not going to be happy because someone else is in a relationship. Or someone else bought this thing. Man, he, how can he afford that house? I hope that thing burns to the ground. And I hope insurance doesn't cover it. That's envy. You want to know what envy is? Envy is jealousy armed with a knife. I'm not just jealous of you. Like, man, you got stuff I want. I'm envious of you, which means I hope God does bad to you. When it literally doesn't affect you at all, which is crazy that you would act that way, that you would think that way, that it would like take up your time and your emotional state. It's literally the grossest part of being human that you can't even be happy for somebody else's goodness. You're so miserable. You'll sit up all night thinking about ways that you hope God takes that person down or their business or whatever. That's the most miserable state to be in is when you're in a sinful state of envy or jealousy, but it's natural to all of us. All of us do it. And social media baits it. Hey, check this out. Look at this awesome person's life. And you go, dude, my life is garbage. And I hate this person that they got such good things going on. Well, guess what? It might be a fake photo and it might be photoshopped. It might not even be in Cancun. It it could be at McDonald's and Hemet or whatever. So you're literally getting jealous and all worked up for literally no reason. Here we go. Despite living in affluence, which means wealth, in one of the most prosperous nations in the world, which is the United States, at the most flourishing time in human history, which is right now, jealousy and envy are everywhere. Isn't that crazy? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you understand who you are because you don't know who you are. So I'm going to walk with you. Ready? You, right now, are one of the most wealthy people that have ever hit the face of the earth. Right now, 95% of the world lives in lower conditions than you do, even if you are at the bottom of, of our pay scale. What do I mean by that? I mean this. We have so many clothes, we can give them away to organizations and they can give them away. Like you can find clothes today for free. Any clothes any place you go to, or for almost no money. 
We have food pantries because we have so much food in America. We can just pack pantries with it. We have so much food. Today at lunch, when you go eat food, if you haven't finished it all, you throw it in the trash and nobody jumps into the trash can to eat the food that you literally threw away. But in many parts of the world, they literally will do that. You have so much wealth that you come home from a job and you can spend eight or 10 hours doing nothing on your phone, play video games, kill aliens and save the world again. Thank you. Kill those Nazis that like came back up out of the dead. You are so wealthy, you can screw around for hours and not have to work to make money to keep, to keep food in your children's mouth. You got up this morning, chances are you had food somewhere. Chances are you had a refrigerator that literally is plugged into the wall that keeps food cold so you can have it at whatever temperature you want it. Most people in the world got up today. They didn't have a door on their house. They're living in dirt. They don't have any other change of clothes. They don't have a church that's local to them that they can walk to. People can literally walk through their door because the government's not going to protect them and rape their wife and kill their children and take everything they might have. And guess what? There's no cops to call. The government's not going to help out if there's a natural disaster. Nobody's coming. Nobody's on the other end of the line. In fact, you don't even have a phone to call anyone. You and I, ready? Let me just put it in perspective. You and I, even at the bottom of America, financially, live the best life that most people have lived since Adam hit the earth. Right now, as we sit here, we are some of the wealthiest people that have ever lived. You get sick, go to the doctor. Oh, the doctor's not open? Go to urgent care. Oh, a doctor happens to be on call for me. Most parts of the world, there is no doctor to go to. Your kid gets sick, he's going to die in your home. And you're going to bury him outside with the rest of your kids that have died. We don't think like that. And here's the reason I tell you that. The reason I tell you, I, I just want to set a baseline for this reason. You would think the wealthier you get, the less envious you are. I got so much stuff. Dude, I have a change of clothes. I got food I'm going to eat. And if I don't want to eat it, I'll throw it away because I'm got. i I'm that wealthy. Ready? You would think in a wealthy type of scenario like we're in, that there would be no jealousy, no envy, because everybody has enough. But jealousy and envy rage in our culture. You want to know why? Because jealousy and envy isn't about what you have. It's about the idea that it's not enough. Literally, if God gave you zero for the rest of your life, if you had to live in the same clothes for the rest of your life, you would have more than most people have ever had in the history of humanity. You live better than most people that have ever hit the globe right now. So be very careful when you start thinking about like, oh man, I need more. Or why don't I have this? Or Johnny's got this or blah, blah, blah. Ready? Jealousy and envy sit in your heart like poison and they keep you from enjoying the blessing of God that he's given you. Here we go. No amount can cure the self-sickness of jealousy and envy. Even billionaires get jealous of each other. Oh my gosh, he bought another island? Wow. I need to up my game. I need to start buying islands. He bought his 14th Lamborghini. Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm slacking. How is anybody ever going to shoot a TikTok video of my sweet cars when they all look like last year's model? Ready? It doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or a millionaire or you have five bucks in your pocket. Envy and jealousy will ruin your life. Because it's not about what you have. It's about what you feel you don't have. Whether over pets, not including cats, or jets, whether over pets or jets, jealousy and envy start at dissatisfaction. Let me tell you where that comes from. Let me tell you where the idea of, of jealousy and envy come from. It comes from the idea of dissatisfaction. I'm dissatisfied with what I have now. Whether you have a little bit or a lot, you're still dissatisfied because that one thing isn't there. It's a relationship that somebody else has. It's a car that somebody else has. It's a house that someone else has. It's the looks they have that you wish you had. It's always somebody else. And there's a, it starts with this little weird seed of dissatisfaction. What I've got isn't enough. I want that. And you know what? I want it so bad. I hope God takes it away from them. Because if I can't be happy, then I don't want them happy. 
Dissatisfaction is a perceived lack that arises from thanklessness to God. Woo, here we go. I'm going to dig inside your heart and it's not going to be pretty. You want to know why dissatisfaction arises in you when you're on social media or when you see somebody else with a nice thing or a relationship that you wish you were in? You want to know why that comes up? Because immediately you go, I'm thankless to God for what I already have. And dissatisfaction becomes this weird thing of jealousy and eventually becomes envy when it's, when it's horrible. And you're literally praying that God takes it away from them because you're so miserable in all the good that God has given you because you've allowed jealousy and envy to grow inside. Rather than thankfulness, you are thankless. Here's our principle. Jealousy is a state of living <laughs> where you can't enjoy the blessing you have because of the blessing someone else has. Isn't that insane? Look at it with your eyes. So many of us in America live this way. We're living better than most people have ever hit the face of the globe, but we're still jealous of people. We're still envious of people. Why would that be? Because jealousy isn't about what you have. It's a state of being where you can't be happy with the, with the blessing that God has given you because you see the blessing of God in someone else's life. It literally doesn't affect you, but for some reason you go, I need that. I want that. And you know what's crazy? Some people are jealous of you. So you might be jealous of someone and they're jealous of somebody else and that person is jealous of you. It's like a triangle of disastrous jealousness. Here's our principle. Jealousy is the state of living where you can't enjoy the blessing you have because of the blessing someone else has. I love Proverbs 1430. If you struggle in this area, underline this verse, take an exacto knife when you get home and cut it out and eat it. Make it part of your DNA. Look at this. A tranquil heart, wow, that's a heart that just lives in peace. God, if you give me zero more for the rest of my life, I'm good. I don't need another car. I don't need another relationship. I don't need more money. I just need my daily bread. God, if you, if you give me more, I just appreciate it. But it, literally, if I don't get a, a house or a different house or a different whatever, God, you bless me so incredibly. I am just, I'm good. I just appreciate you. That's a tranquil heart. A tranquil heart gives life to the bones, which means you're not always just envious about stuff. But envy makes the bones rot. Woo! Dude, envy just will rot. Envy and jealousy are literally poison that sits in your soul, and it just eats away all the good. It eats away your relationship with God. You'll never feel like God is, is blessing your life because you always feel like you're getting ripped off. Why didn't I get that? Why didn't I have this? Why don't I have those clothes? Why don't I have this thing? Blah, blah, blah. And it's always something else. And so you never, you never appreciate God or what he's doing in your life because you're so busy focused on yourself and other people that you, you don't ever feel like you're walking with God. What's the flip side? Here's the good. Here's how we get rid of it. So we're doing a little surgery. Now we're gonna, we're gonna heal it up. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in me, however, is goodness. Here's the goodness. Here's how you fix envy and jealousy. The concept of good versus evil or bad in the world comes from the goodness of God. Humanity, you and me, wouldn't even know what good was if God wasn't good or displayed good in the world. Everybody look at me. I know it's third service. I'm going to walk into philosophy for a really quick second. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a rabbit trail, but we're going to catch a rabbit. So watch. I love philosophy. I, I probably would have ended up going down that road um, if God hadn't called me to do something else. So watch. One of the biggest, if, you're in, if, you, if philosophy is your thing, one of the biggest conundrums of philosophy, whether it's David Hume, whether it's Descartes, just name somebody. One of the biggest problems is the problem of evil which is why is there evil in the world? And why, if there is evil, why can I recognize the difference between evil and good? Dogs don't worry about that stuff. Animals don't worry about that stuff. Plants don't worry about that stuff. But me as a human, I recognize that there's good and evil in the world. Why can I tell the difference? And why is, why is there a moralness to our existence? Ready? Here we go. If you're an atheist or an agnostic, it's very difficult to find a grounding for what true goodness is. Where does goodness come from? How do I know the difference between good and evil? 
In other words, when somebody does something evil, why do I call that wrong? When somebody does something good in my life, why do I go, wow, that was really good? The answer is when you detach God from reality is it must just be social. Like social societies just make up their rules of right and wrong. Sort of, we decide kind of what's appropriate and inappropriate and we put people in jail or whatever. But that doesn't answer the deeper question of why are we able to make rules based on good or bad? And if you think it's just sociological, watch, watch me. Take some spiritual Red Bull, hang with me. Don't tap out. If you think it's just sociological, remember Germany was putting millions of people to death and that whole country voted that that was the best thing to do. So it can't just be a society deciding. We as a nation said, nope, that's wrong. And nations go to war. Well, if it's just sociological, then you should allow every nation to make up their own rules. If they want to gas their own people or kill other people, um, that's, their, that's their right. So it's ultimately not sociological. We even know by, by nature that it can't just, a society can't make up right, right and wrong if they're killing people, innocent people. And it can't be individual because if I, if I make up my own rules, murdering you might seem good to me. So it can't be individual and it can't be sociological. What else are you left with? That God is over all things and gives us a moral nature that tells us what's right and wrong. And we now as a society make up rules about how to function amongst each other. Literally, I just answered the most technical and problematic philosophic in the history of humanity, which is, how do I know right and wrong? How do I gather right and wrong? Here's the reason I tell you that. I caught the rabbit. So listen, we don't know what good is unless God is good and does good in the world. Because God is good and sinning against him is evil, is wrong, that's how I know the difference between right and wrong because God has implanted that in me and hasn't put it in my dog. Because humans are special. We are moral creatures that recognize right and wrong. What is wrong? Doing something against the goodness of God. Here's the crazy part. You might be an atheist. You go, I don't even believe in God. But God's goodness is still in your life. The craziest part of, of, of knowing this reality is this. God has been good to you relationally. You got some friends or a wife or a husband, or people at work that love you. God's been good to you financially. He's blessed you with some amount of money to manage. God's blessed you with the Minnesota Vikings to love when the NFL season starts. God has blessed you with so much stuff, you don't even recognize the goodness of God. You don't even have to believe that God exists, but he's so good, he still blesses you and you don't even believe he exists. That's how good God is. The point is this, if God is good and he does good in the world, I recognize that God is good when I see good in the world. Here we go. Here's our, here's our um, principle. God is good and does good. God is good and does good. I recognize God is good when I see good in my life. God, because he by nature is good, sinning against him is evil which means he is purely good. He is purely perfect. His way is the right way. When he does good in my life, I recognize the goodness of God. And God can only do good things because of the goodness that he is. The Holy Spirit helps believers care about goodness and someone else's well-being. So look at it in here. Verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to tie it all together. Everybody look at me. I'm going to tie it all together. My nature, envy, jealousy. There's no reason to be jealous, but I, I'm going to be. Envy. I want that person hurt. I want the blessing taken away. That's natural. You, you feel it when you go on social media or you feel it when you see somebody on, on the freeway or whatever. Ready? What, God, what does God expect of me? If the Holy Spirit's dwelling inside of me, I should be displaying goodness. Why? Because if God is good, God's children should be doing good. Woo! I'm trying to tie it all together, people. I'm skinning the rabbit. Hey, here's how this all goes together. God is good. It's the only reason I even know there's good in the world. Or else I'd be like an animal or a fish that can't recognize morality. But I do recognize morality, which means I'm stamped in the image of God. So does God do evil? No, God always does good. What is evil then? It's when I sin against him, the goodness of God. So how do I recognize that God's good in my life? Is when I see the good that happens in my life. 
I don't deserve any of this. Don't deserve the relationships. Don't deserve the finances I've got. Don't deserve the health I've got to get out of bed. Don't deserve the cereal that's in a box in the, in the pantry. I deserve nothing, but God gives it to me. That means he's good to me. What does that ultimately mean? If God is good, if I'm his child, I should be doing good in the world too. So that people see God in me, the goodness of God should be flowing through me to good in the world because the world is full of envy and jealousy and evil. But the God's goodness shows the goodness of God through God's people. Doing good and benefiting others instead of ourselves is powerful as it can overcome evil and change lives as a witness to others. I love Romans 12, 21. Romans 12, 21 says this. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Why is that? Because God is good. God is greater than evil. Here's something crazy. Look at me. Here's something crazy. People can mean you harm, can do you hurt. People can be envious against you. They, they pray to God that God does something against you. But when you do good and act in, in, in goodness, because of the goodness of God, you'll be amazed how God protects you from all evil. People's, people's prayers against you, envious, man, God turns it into blessing. The hate people have against you, that, that maybe because you love God, God turns into love back to you. There's a crazy reality where you overcome evil by continuing to do good. Look at me. Some of you guys are people of fire. Where you're like, man, I, I burn people to the ground when I feel that fire inside. Ready? The fire you use to take on fire often burns your own life up. Goodness is God's extinguisher. People, people hate on you. People don't like you. People backstabbing you. People blah, blah, blah. This is, this is extinguisher. That's what that is. I don't even know why I just did that. But I just put out the fire of your life. Why would that be? Why? Because God is good. When I act good, God sees maturity in me, sees humility in me, sees that I'm good with whatever God's given me. God turns the good, uh, the evil that people have tried to bring into my life into good for me. It's crazy. It's a principle, spiritual principle of living. But here's the thing. If you just go, I'm not interested in following God. I'm just going to keep on grinding away. You literally will destroy your own life. Because jealousy and anger will just destroy who you are. You'll spend more time caring about other people than you do about your own walk with God. Lastly, I close with this. Actually, I, I still got... The principle of number two. Here we go. Everybody ready? God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm going to get all charismatic up in here. God is good. All the time, brothers. And all the time, God is good. I just blew my voice out because it's the end of the third service. I'm too white to be talking like that. So I just, I gave you everything I had. I gave you all I got. Ready? Hey, look at it with your face. God is good. How often is God good? Man, all the time God is good because that's his character to do good in the world. And he wants to do good to his children so his children can do good in the world and glorify the God who is good. I close with this. I need to act more good in my life. I need to act with more good in my life. Here's the application. Stop being envious and, and jealous. Look at me. Here's how you defeat jealousy. All of us are here. So look in my eyes or look in my eyes. I'm not up there yet. Look in here. Ready? Here's how you do it right now. When you're flipping through social media or when you see the person you're jealous of at work, their looks, they, what they have, relationship, whatever it is, whatever your weakness is, immediately when you start to feel that like, I don't even know what this is, but this is jealousy. Immediately when you feel that, Pray for God's blessing in their life. Woo! You're like, can't do it. Yes, you can. You know what that does? Immediately when you go, oh, that person has a relationship I really want, or that person has money, or they're popular, or whatever it is. Immediately when, when they come up in your mind, Satan's going to put them in your mind. Satan's going to put them in your mind because Satan knows your weakness. Hey, remember this girl? Remember this guy? Remember this money? Remember this blah, blah, blah? Remember, the, remember their blessing and you don't get it? Immediately when they come up in your mind, go, God, man, I thank you for that person. I pray that you're blessing them today. Because it has nothing to do.
do with you? Who cares if they're blessed by God? Let them be blessed by God. You're blessed by God too. Wouldn't you want somebody praying for you that God will bless you more? Even the baby agrees. Listen up. I'm talking to infants too. Hey, look at me. You know, how, you know how to flush the poison out of your life? I can tell you, pray for the blessing of those you are jealous or envious of. And immediately it'll leave you. It's crazy. All that emotional energy that's like, yeah, why are they getting just boom? God, I just pray for them today. I just pray that, and like their picture. And comment underneath. Glad to see God's blessing your life. I pray for more. You'll be amazed. All of a sudden that grip of like jealousy and envy, just go boom and it's gone. It's crazy. That's what it means to be humble before God and going, I don't need more. Man, God's, give, God's blessed me with crazy good. So if he gives you more or something that I, I really wanted, I'm good because I want you to be blessed. Goodness is connected to generosity as it mirrors the generosity of God. The goodness of God is given to God's children, me and you, so we can show good in the world and glorify our good God. Here's our principle. Doing good should influence our affluence. Woo! I'm going to tie this whole circle up. Look at me. Ready? You're wealthy beyond belief. I know your bank account might only show $12 or negative $12. Ready? You manage your finances. Okay? Here's what I'm saying to you. If God has been so good to you, what is your good back to God financially? Many of us, we spend all of our money on Starbucks and food and stuff at two-day shipping, okay? If we went through, oh, I, I hit it in this service. Okay, good. Two-day shipping. I said it again. Ready? If you took, if you took an, the chunk that you spend on stuff that's not essential, which is about 90% of what you spend, as far as like usable money outside of rent and electricity, it's crazy how you have hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars that you give nothing back to God. That's crazy. What that shows is just an insatiable materialism. That's where envy and jealousy come from because you have no discipline to go, man, I, I'm, God's given me so much. You, you could be uh, working a, a job at Crazy Chicken, El Pollo Loco. I'm probably going to be there tonight on the 79 getting food. It might be a minimum wage job. You're like, dude, I only bring home like a thousand bucks a month, whatever. Awesome. Some of that belongs back to God. Not because God needs your money. God needs zero. God owns all the money. But you, we do that as a discipline to God. Some of you guys need to be given 10,000 bucks to God. Some of you guys need to be given 10. The, the issue is this. The issue isn't the money. It's not the amount. It's the attitude of your heart. That we literally spend all of our money on ourselves and we think, man, I, the, only, the only reason I do that is because I just want more, 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 more. Man, Chill out. God can always bless you with more. God ain't poor. God's not broke. So what do we do? We give a portion back to God. Some of us make $5 a, a week. Some of us make $5 million a year. And you know what? Some of that needs to go back to God. You need to show yourself disciplined to be able to say, I'm not ruled by my stuff. I'm ruled by my savior. How will people see the goodness of God if they don't see the goodness of God's people? The goodness of the heart should translate to generosity of the hand. And I close with this. If God is good and does good in the world, then God's children should be good and do good. Hey, ready? Jealousy, envy. When that comes in your mind, pray for God's blessing rather than I hope they die. Kill, kill jealousy and envy in your own life. And then number two, do good in the world. Do good with your finances. Look for opportunities to do good at work. Bless people rather than use them. Be a person of good. Why? Because your good God is good to you.